one up limited has equity share capital of 5 lakhs divided into equity shares of rupees 100 each it wishes to raise further rupees 3 lakhs for expansion come moderation schemes the company plans the following financing alternatives issuing shares only 1 lakh by issuing shares 2 lakhs through debentures or term loan at 10 percent raising a term loan only at 10 percent 1 lakh equity shares 2 lakh 8 percent preference shares these are alternatives we must first build a capital structure alternative table so we have particulars okay and we have capital structure alternatives and under that okay so let's see i'm going to do a double for particulars just so that we can accommodate one two three over here and yes one two and is it three it is four so three and four please keep adequate spacing when you'll do it all right and we have currently got equity share capital at 100 rupees each so equity share capital at rupees 100 each okay and this is old what we already have and that's going to be there across all our alternatives okay and the figure is five lakhs all right so across the board we have five lakhs and now we need to look at alternatives so they're saying we need to issue three lakhs and the first option is equity shares only that means this was old so now we have new shares new shares and they're saying all three lakhs should be based on new shares that is one so i'm done looking at this alternative the next guy they're saying one lakh okay so in structure two they want one lakh in equity shares so i'm going to write that down and two lakhs two lakhs they are suggesting we go for debentures or loan term loan at 10% per annum. Noted. Next, they're saying term loan only at 10%. How much are we wanting to issue? 3 lakhs. So, full 3 lakhs is going to come here. Option 4. Okay, in option 4, they're saying we should go in for 1 lakh shares. So, I'm going to put 1 lakh shares. And 2 lakhs preference shares. So, new category. So, completely new line. And they are talking about 8%, 8% preference shares. Irrespective of our capital structure, we started off with 5. We are issuing another 3. So, our total irrespective has to be 8 lakhs. Total. Anyhow across the board is going to be anyway this is just a working note for you all to understand because it's going to be based on this that we actually decide which capital structure is best now that we are done doing this we continue with the rest of the question we have no data for sales or variable cost or contribution or fixed cost 
we directly have data for EBIT. So we start with that EBIT 150,000. Okay, and they're saying, assuming that the estimated earnings before interest and tax after expansion is 150,000, tax rate 35%. So this 150,000 is going to be common to all four options. All right, so one more time, we have particulars. And we have option one, two, three, and four. We have earnings before interest and tax. Okay, and they've told us it is 1,50,000. So before I go ahead and put down the whole format, I'm just going to get this over with. 1,50,000. Okay, 1,50,000. Then minus interest gives me EBT minus tax and Let's confirm that rate, 35%. Okay, our tax rate is 35%. So tax at the rate 35% gives you earnings after tax or net profit after tax from which we subtract preference dividend. And doing that gives us earnings available, earnings available to equity shareholders, please use full forms. Okay, see how long the sum ends up becoming. But it's simple. Use a long scale, make your life easier. Okay, so we get earnings available to equity shareholders from which we divide the number of shares to get the earnings per share. Whoever's earnings per share, whichever plan's earnings per share is the most, is the plan that we will opt for. Now, I'm going to first fill up the data. Under plan one, under plan one, there is no debenture or term loan. It only exists in plans two and three. So in plan one, interest is zero. The interest in plan two is going to be 10% of two lakhs. So that is going to give me 20,000. Similarly, 10% of 3 lakhs is going to give me 30,000. In plan 4, again, there is no debentures or term loan, so that's going to be zero. Then, very slowly, I'm going to go down and have a look at what we have for preference shares. Okay, so preference shares only exists in the last plan, so it's going to be 0, 0, 0, and 8%, 8% preference shares of 2 lakhs, which is going to give me a preference dividend. This company would have to pay a preference dividend of 16,000 if it opts for option four. Now, 1,50,000 minus zero gives you 1,50,000. Okay, this gives you 1,30,000, 1,20,000, 1,30,000, and why am I going uh, across uh, horizontally is because on your calculator, and I'm not sure if it's possible on mine, I'm going to find out, it's possible for you to lock and multiply. So 35% of 1,50,000 gives me 52,500. All right, and let me see, 52,500. And lucky for me, that happens in two places. So I'm just going to write them in both the spaces. Now, let's see what happens for 1,30,000. And if I just do this, 1,30,000, without doing anything else, if I do 1,30,000, it does not work on my calculator. It works on yours. So please use all the shortcuts available. Anyway, for me, it's going to be the hard way. 1,30,000 into 35% of 0.35, 45,500, 45,500. And I'm going to repeat the same thing with 1,20,000. So 1,20,000 into 0.35, 35%, which gives me 
2000. Okay, and now I go about subtracting. So I have one lakh fifty thousand minus fifty to five hundred, and I'm only going to concentrate on uh, plan one for now, and then we look at the others. Okay, so subtracting one lakh fifty to 50,000 minus 52, 500 gives me 97, 500, 97, 500. There is no preference dividend, so that is also going to be my earnings available. Now, what do you mean by number of shares? Remember, the formula, the formula for number of shares is equal to equity share capital upon face value. And we know that the face value is 100. They have not told us at what price are we issuing the new shares. So altogether, we have 8 lakhs worth of shares in option 1. So 8 lakhs upon 100, do it on the calculator, we'll end up with 8,000. So the number of shares is 8,000. And I'm going to take 97,500 and divide by 8,000. And I get 12.1875, which I'm going to write as it is. 12.1875. We're repeating this process with all of them. You all are in a position to solve the rest. I don't think you're going to have any problem subtracting to get net profit after tax. I don't think you all are going to have a problem uh, Subtracting going forward to get earnings available to equity shareholders. You only have to deal with 16,000 in this case You all may face a challenge Calculating number of shares and I'm going to fill that up for you. Okay, so we have in Policy 2 capital structure 2 5 lakhs Plus 1 lakh. Okay, both of these guys are shares old shares and new shares. So 6 lakhs upon 100 <coughs> will give us 6,000 so here we have 6,000. In three, there are no, there are no uh, shares being issued. So we are back to 5,000. And in four, again, it is six altogether. So 6,000. So back here, all right, we have 5,000 and 6,000. Simply divide. Calculate your earnings per share across all these policies and you're going to choose whichever is highest. All right, so your answer is going to be since plan dash has highest EPS of rupees dash, it should be selected now which one is that i'm leaving it up to you please post it in the comments below thank you